Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Mary's this morning. We're joined by Sean Saunders from the Methodist Church today to take our service. Um, if we could just have a few moments' silence before the service begins. Thank you. The book of Lamentation says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Will you please be seated? <coughs> Uh, greetings and welcome to St. Mary's Church and our Anglican Methodist Partnership Memorial Service in East Barnet. Uh, you might have noticed that um, that's not Alec Corio reading those words, uh, that's me. Alec sends his apologies. He's tested positive for COVID and so with the family is having to isolate, to shield. 
So he sends his apologies. He would have loved to have been here with us. It's a reminder, of course, that uh, the, the virus is still around and we're having to keep some kind of restrictions and guidelines in place. The service will therefore be more simplified compared to previous years, but I still hope that you will find comfort and peace in this service as we remember loved ones who have died. It means that we're going to light the candles at the very end of the service after the final words, and stewards will direct you forward for that if you wish to light a candle in memory of a loved one, and then we'll go around and share some refreshments at the side of the church. We had hoped and planned that that might be outside in the, in the churchyard. I'm not sure if that's still possible, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But when we do share it, when we are sharing refreshments, please do introduce yourselves. I can remember most names and most faces, but uh, not quite all. So please do uh, say hello and introduce yourself. So we meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. His peace and healing be with you. And also with you. Our faith in Christ and our love for those who have died means that our hope does not lie in the things that are seen, but in the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. We come together to remember before God those we love who have died and to give thanks for their lives and to comfort one another. We have two readings from the scriptures. The first is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The New Testament reading is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 20. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, 
She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. During the past 20 months, that reading from Ecclesiastes has taken on a whole new meaning. It's one of the suggestions I offer families when I meet them to discuss a funeral service. Many of you will already have known how it starts. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. It became well known in the 1960s as the basis of the song, Turn, 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 written by Pete Seeger and made popular by the birds. The pandemic has brought home to us a whole new appreciation of what's really important in life and how we need to take time. Time to value each other. Time to give thanks for the people who have especially helped us. Time to hold on to the most important things in life. Lines in that reading also include the line, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Those lines took on a whole new meaning last year and this year as families could no longer have the funeral service they were planning for. They could no longer hug each other or celebrate with a special meal or drinks after the service. In the early days of the pandemic, I remember a son who drove all the way down from Scotland for his mother's funeral to be with his sister and father who lived here down south. They could not hug. They could not meet up anywhere afterwards. They just stood around and chatted in the car park, keeping their social distance from each other. The son said to me after the service, I really could do with a pint now. But instead, all he could do was get into his car and drive all the way back up to Scotland on that very same day. That reading from Ecclesiastes is a series of opposites. I've mentioned the first, a time to be born and a time to die. The final two are a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. It's written in such a way that it begins and ends with that which is good and positive. It begins with a time to be born, and it ends with a time for peace. And so that poem is embraced by life and peace, for love breaks through the barriers of death and despair. Despite the devastation and the difficulties brought upon our world, and especially upon families who grieved, there were still plenty of examples of friends and family members, workers and volunteers, who gave tirelessly for others during those difficult times. Workers at funeral directors worked long hours to ensure that families were treated with dignity and respect. In between services at crematoria and cemetery chapels, I would see the staff busy sanitizing the chapel and then getting ready to greet the next set of mourners 
with a quiet dignity. One member of staff at the local crematorium said to me, somehow we got through it. But I think it was more than somehow. I think it was commitment and vocation, time and love from neighbors, friends and family members, staff in cemeteries and crematoria, funeral directors and others who supported the dying and the bereaved. In our reading from John's Gospel, Jesus says to Mary, do not hold on to me. He needs to be with the Father. Letting go in time of death is an incredibly difficult thing to do. It's not easy at the best of times, and it can only be done with the love and the support of others. And so after these 20 months, we this morning have a time. We have a time to remember, a time to name loved ones and to light candles in their memory, a time to give thanks and a time for peace. Thanks be to God. be joined by Bettina in the reading of the names. Not here, okay. So we remember those we have loved and will see no longer in this life. See no longer till our common life is illuminated by the presence of God in the resurrection to eternal life. Jean Abbott, Ronald Abbott, Derek Alcock, Sheila Ailey, Vas Vasiliki Andiel, Fred Anthony, Alan Astley, Ronald Bailey, John Ronald Bell, Alan Bennett, Eric and Reg Bennett, Stan Blackmore, Sylvia Blackmore, Cecily Blunt, Peter Blunt, Stanley Blythe, Violet Blythe, Roy Boniface, Rini Boswell, Gerald Bowen, Edna Britton, Michael Burke, Barbara Joyce Brower, John Noel Brower, Tony Brown, Frederick Butterby, Peter Campbell, Edith Cashman, Emily Cashman, Frederick Cashman, Alfred Chapman, Mabel Chapman, Kathleen Childs, Roy Claridge, Peter Clark, Kathy Clitheroe, Pat Coates, Gwyneth Colley, Helen Collinson, Annie Conroy, Mavis Joan Cook, James Jamie Cooper, Carol Ann Cottrell, Kathleen Kovat, Joan Cox, Maureen Crouch, Sonia Damali, George Danson, Lynn Danson, Mary Danson, Elsie Davis, Joan Elizabeth Davis, Percy Davis, Joyce Deed, Ernest Dixon, Louise Dixon, Mary Doncaster, Olive Driscoll, 
Linda Eid, Barbara Field, Mick Field, Olive Finch, Chris Fink, Kathleen Dora Floyd, Janet Foley, John Foley, Sharon French Daly, Florence May Fry, Roy Gartrell, Elsie Gibbs, Vera Giblet, Judith Gilbert, Anthony David Golding, Irene Graham, Jean Greenfield, Winifred Joyce Gregory, Joyce Grew, Paul Goodenek, Audrey Hall, Winifred Hart, Richard Hazelhurst, Gerald Haynes, David Haswell, Shirley Henry, Mary Herbert, Ken Herbert, Kenneth Hicks, Helen Higgs, Sylvia Hodgkinson, Josephine Holmes, James Holmes, John Horridge, Martin Horton, David Howard, Stanley Howarth, Jonathan Hughes, Violet Hutton, Rose Ayrton, Harold Jackman, Anne Jennings, Jacqueline Johnson, Kathleen Johnson, Connie Jones, Edwin Fergus Jones, Stephen Kelly, Hilary Kennedy, Beryl Kirkham, Joyce Knappman, Dennis Lancashire, Mabs Landells, Mabs Lawson, Iris Ledane, Joan Ledane, Leonard Ledane, Elaine Lindsay, Brenda Lisksey, Elsie Lomas, Jonathan Malloy, Violet Madison, Len Mears, Margaret Mears. Christine Martins, Olivia Montague Smith, Karen Murphy, Eric Musson, Sis Needs, Mandy Needs, Reg Needs, Jean Betty Newman, Geoffrey Nicholson, Mary O'Dowd, Ollie Oliver, Richard Osborne, Josephine Page, Bill Pace, Pauline Ann Pateman, Peter Alfred Pateman, Patricia Payne, Beryl Pierce, Jean Pierce, Bijar Pereira, Stephen Pereira, Arthur Perks, Doris Ellen Catherine Phillips, Barbara Paul, Victor James Porter, Jean Potter, Jean Pretty, Kathleen Price, Norman Price, Doreen Popperwell, Doris, Doris Lillian Porton, John William Randall, Howard Rich, Mary Millstone, Christine Ritchie, Jennifer Roberts, Leslie Roberts, Sylvia Rust, George Ryan, Kitty Ryan, Pauline Paula Salt, Margaret Sanders, Marjorie Seagroat, Joy Alexandra Selwood, Graham Shaddock, Jean Shaddock, Louise Matilda Shepherd, Robert Sinclair, Brenda Smith, Margaret Smith, Dorothy Start, Martin Stevens, Martin Stone, Lavinia Street, Sylvia Sylvie Sweet, Ulrich Thompson, Veronica Thompson, Mimi Tibo Tiboni, Ada Tilcock, Brian Tilcock, 
Ethel Tiller, Stephen Tiller, Cecilia Joyce Tomasi, Robert Lawrence Turner, William Henry Pete Turner, David Vince, Hilda Wade, Monty Wade Sr., Monty Wade Jr., Jill Walker, James Ward, Yvonne Patricia Ward. Ivy Wardle, Gladys Watson, Lily Weeks, Brian Williams, Louise Williams, Mary Zellinger, Andrew Zellinger, Peter Zellinger, Terence Chigi, Patricia Chigi, Eddie Thompson, Joe Martinez, Marion Taylor, Malcolm James Mason, Amanda Jeanette Shaw, Muriel Jean Ling, Brian Harry Ling, Christine Martins, Edna Britton, Gerald Haynes. And we pray for the relatives of those who we have not named, but who are known and treasured by God. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold all souls in life. We praise you for those who have shared this earthly life with us and have entered into eternal life with you. We thank you for the lives of those we've named and those unnamed whose memories we hold dear. We pray that we may continue to live by the example of their qualities and all that you achieved in them. We pray for loved ones, for family and friends who knew and loved them. Grant them your peace and reassurance, especially when an anniversary or a special memory is especially painful. We pray for those who care for others, especially in the final stages of life. We remember staff in hospitals, care homes, hospices, for carers and all those who give support at home. We pray for those who work at funeral directors, crematoria and cemeteries, for those in counselling, our churches and all who provide follow-up care. We give thanks for all their care, dedication and kindness. As we remember those who have died, we pray that you will bring us with them to share with all your saints in glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust you not for ourselves alone, but for those also whom we love and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe your power to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so may we trust your love to give eternal life and to all who believe in him, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will you please stand? May Christ, the Good Shepherd, enfold you in his love, fill you with his peace, and lead you onwards into the new life and hope of the resurrection. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
St. Paul says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.